So I am super stoked about today's episode. It's another epic interview with multiple six-figure-a-year-earner, a year, Lori Olson. And she just shares an amazing story of how she went from one company to another. She found her home. She found her passion. But more importantly, she found her purpose of why she said yes to network marketing. So I hope you guys enjoy. Welcome to the Network Marketing Made Simple podcast. I am Scott Aaron, and each and every week, I am going to come to you with simple, short, and powerful tactics and tips on what you can do each day, each week, each month, and each year to grow your network marketing business, income, and team. And just remember, network marketing is not easy but it can be made easy with simple steps to bring you the success that you truly deserve. Welcome to episode 64 of the Network Marketing Made Simple podcast. If you are a new listener, then welcome. And if you are a returning listener, then welcome back. And as always, before we get started with today's amazing content, if you are a network marketer, whether you're seasoned or brand new, and you are typically building your business through the means of Facebook and Instagram, and you are not yet using LinkedIn to prospect for builders, then head over to my website, www.scottaaron.net. You can schedule a free 15-minute discovery call with me where I can learn more about you your business, your struggles, and how we can potentially help each other. So in the string of episodes that I've been doing recently, I'm doing another interview with another amazing leader. And my friend that I'm bringing on today is no exception. She is incredible. She's built a multiple six-figure business in her opportunity. And my, my goal with these interviews and these episodes is to empower all of you guys, the listeners that that might be thinking about quitting or maybe you're doing something wrong and and give you these these tangible takeaways and tips from those that have already done it and realize that it's really just taking those simple actions to create that su- those success that that you truly deserve for you, your business, your family and your legacy. So instead of me telling their story, I'm going to have them tell their own story. So Lori Olson, welcome to today's show. Thank you for having me, Scott. I'm glad to be here. Awesome. So as, as I like to do, I want people to kind of share their journey and their story. So, so tell, talk a little bit about your background uh, of, of, you know, obviously what you've done before network marketing and what was it that had you say yes to network marketing? Sure. You know, I was the typical go to college, graduate college, go find a job person. Um, I really didn't know anything else. When I was in college, I knew nothing, never heard of network marketing, um, which is way different now. You know, no, there was not much social media that you would do anything really quote, online. Um, So I did that. And I was in education. I was a teacher and I was a good teacher. Um, I didn't dislike the actual job of teaching. uh, But then I realized very quickly, I needed to go back and get an advanced education in order to ever make really any money other than, you know, years of experience, which still didn't add up to a lot. So I went and got my master's degree to be a counselor, a school counselor. I really enjoyed my graduate work. Um, And I was a school counselor and I got married. And then I realized as I looked, um, looked at my day in and days out, um, I had a high level of um, desire to take care of myself. um, And I had a high level of desire to do very good at my job. And I was worn out. And a little overwhelmed already at, gosh, 27 years old. Um, And I remember thinking, I don't know how I'm going to have, how do people have kids in the middle of all of this? (laughs) 
<laughs> and everyone was asking me, when are you going to have kids? You know, that's what they say right when you get married. Yeah. And I thought, oh, my God, I feel like I will, I don't know, like regret that or be remorseful for that because I feel like I lost myself. Because all I heard about, I mean, everyone I worked out worked with talked about how stressful kids were um and i knew they loved them but that i you know how it is that's how people how people talk and i don't have time to work out and you know they just lost themselves after all that because they threw themselves also into their work so long story short the lack i like to work period it's very rewarding to me but the lack of flexibility and being able to live my life on my own terms in order to make life work for me is truly what um, opened my eyes to network marketing, which I still at that point didn't know about. I was just trying to find something that had a better schedule. <laughs> and so it was the lifestyle, 100%. It's not, it was the lifestyle. I want, I want to live, I want to work when I want to work. And that's, that's so important because people, you know, this, this misnomer of everyone wanting to create wealth. And, and in my opinion, true wealth is is not just money but it's it's the time freedom that you get from the money that you create because you know to be able to wake up every day and to to create your day your time on your terms vacation when you want that's that's real power right there and and that's that's what life is meant to be we are not just like you said we are not meant to just go to college to get a job so we can retire and then die. That's not what life is all about. It's meant to be lived right now. And I think you are a, a, a true and fine example of that. So how many, I mean, I know you've been in network marketing for a number of years now. How many total years have you been in network marketing? 17 now. And with, uh, your, and with your current opportunity, how long have you been with them? Five. So in the five years that you've been with your current opportunity, how big of a team have you grown? We have almost 10,000 team members. Um, and wow. that is, that is, um, that is yes, hard work and duplication and teamwork, but it's also, um, a smart company, <laughs> you know? So I came from, I didn't know what I didn't know when I started my other network marketing company. So I, um, you know, I spent 12 years doing it, it, it served its purpose. I was able to stay home with my children. I did build it to that. It made a full-time income. And I was always grateful for that. Cause like I said, that was the number one thing I wanted. Um, but when you put in 12 years of, of blood, sweat, and tears, you start thinking a lot bigger than that. Yes. You know? Yeah. So um, these products came to me at a time that I was in desperate need for them. And I literally felt a difference in a short period of time. And then I looked at the opportunity and realized I was, I was in the kind of in the right place, but just not didn't have the right vehicle. Yeah. Um, and then all I did was shift my efforts to a product, yes, that I 100% more believe could make an impact in people's lives, um, but also, you know, a structure that pay, truly pays people what they're worth. And that is so rewarding. So, yeah, we quadrupled, or I should, when I say we, my husband is super duper supportive, so we're a we. Um, quadrupled the income that took me 12 years to build within my first three years. Amazing. I mean, and, and, and if you do the numbers, that's, you know, for just for the listeners out there, that's, that's 2000 people a year for the last five years, you know, joining your organization. If you want to break it down even further, it's almost 150 people a month with, which I think is just incredible. So, you know, kudos to you and also kudos to your husband and, Spousal support is so important when you're looking to build a network marketing business because, you know, they, they don't need to build it with you. They just need to be on board and supportive of the road that you're going down. And obviously, your husband being who he is, the incredible husband and partner um, and teammate that he is for you, that's, you know, I'm, I'm sure that has absolutely attributed to some of your success. Oh, 100, 150 um, percent. If people don't have that, I really feel, you know. It's funny you bring this up because in my first company, I was in there before I had kids and then also in the middle of it. And I watched women stop, you know, like just 
kind of be suffocated and not really reach their full potential because of that lack of support. But I won't always blame the other, the spouse, because whether it's husband or wife, it's just a lack of communication. Mm. Um, in, in some cases, not every case, I believe it's a lack of communication and being serious with your goals and telling them why you're doing this and holding yourself accountable and showing the success and that the time you spend away, not away, but like, you know, downstairs on the phone or whatever it happens to be, um, is totally paying off and, and painting a big picture for your family. Um, without that communication, they just think that you're dinking around and they're not going to support you. Yeah. And, and that's so, the thing. You, you have to let them know, yes. not, not only in your words, but in your actions, how serious you are. Absolutely. Absolutely. So that brings me to my next question. You know, even though you've been in network marketing for 17 years and when you first started back in 2002, network marketing look, looked much different. There wasn't social media. You know, there weren't all these these resources that we now have today. So basically a two part question. What was the biggest challenge that you faced growing your business in 2002 uh, compared to the biggest challenge that you faced restarting building your business in a new opportunity in 2014? Uh, back when I started in 2002, it was freaking not knowing anything. <laughs> <laughs> um, and just kind of following through the steps, it was a more of a party plan. Um, and you could, you know, utilize your, your family and friends and one thing, and it worked well back then. Um, but just literally knowing that, um, oh, I need to set some goals. Literally. I mean, no one, I didn't have anyone telling me that. I just always was the type that's like, I'm just going to do as well as I can. I work as hard as I can. But then you never know when you're like, hey, I did a freaking good job, you know, mm -hmm. or you know what? I didn't really step it up like I could. So setting goals was huge for me, as simple as it sounds. It's not because I still talk to people like they, they can't, they won't write anything down as far as a goal, which means they're scared. They're not serious, something, you know? Yeah. So um, writing down just say yeah the lack of reach when you think about it I really wasn't able to until social media came around it was a lot harder to grow your business um, outside your community or your state or definitely your country I mean now we're global you know in our company so um, it just didn't you know the lack of reach and then um, it, really it was building skills at the very beginning the structure was the way it was and then not having social media for a larger reach. And that's the way all of it was. It was just who you knew and who you talked to. Um, so for me, I felt like I had a pretty good um, network that at least I had some people, you know, that I, I could work from, but you, you did meet people at each event that stemmed to another event and things like that. But yeah, learning the skills, to be honest, that was the biggest thing for me in my network, my first company. But I did go to events and I got a lot, obviously, a lot better and being willing. Um, also humble enough to realize that I needed the help. Um, I didn't realize that at first. You know, people encouraged me to go to events and I kind of didn't want to take the time away to do it. It's not what I said, but that's what I was thinking, you know, to travel <laughs> to it and everything. Um, and then I remember some flyer or something came in the mail, um, at this was at the beginning, I didn't even have any kids, but, if I, but I was too busy. Um, and my husband said, I thought you were serious about this business. I said, well, I am. He goes, why aren't you going to this thing, to this training where they can teach you how to be really good. Wow. I was like, I don't know. <laughs> and that's why I went. My sponsor told me to go. That wasn't enough. I had to have someone sitting right next to me like, I thought you were serious. Wow. Let's get this show on the road. Yeah, he, turned, he turned the mirror around right in front of you. So, I mean, that, yeah. that's, that, that's yeah. huge. Now, what about 2014? So, you realized that, that you know, you built the skills, you built the income, but you wanted more. And you obviously saw another opportunity. You know, not, I don't want to call it restarting, but building differently, obviously, in 2014 was different than 2002. So, what was the biggest challenge that you faced restarting uh, a new opportunity 12 years later? Uh, for most people, I would say it's probably getting out of their own way, getting out of their comfort zone, mm. being bold and being brave. And I still have those challenges sometimes, but at that moment where I was at, it wasn't, I, I was a little, it took me a long time to make the decision because it was starting over. 
I had to, I don't still get a paycheck from that company. I never did. I had to quit. So I know some people can build another company and, and still get that paycheck if they use the products or something. That wasn't, I didn't have that option. Wow. That's why it took me a while. So it was, you resign and release your team to start something new. So it took me, I sat on those products for seven or eight months because it was a full-time income. It wasn't inc incredible, but it was full-time and it was providing. Um, and so I just finally did it with, you know, my husband and I had lots of conversations. So I had to make a decision. I was like, do I really want to start all over again? I know how much blood, sweat, and tears went into this. But I built enough belief that I knew, I saw what the other people in my company were doing, and I knew that if they did it, I could do it too. Love it. So it really was, and I knew they could, I knew that there was resources and I was coachable. So it really was guts, really. So, you know, to get going again and start over. And I turned my fear into absolute excitement. And that's, that's just how I made that shift in my mind. Like you, you're not going to be afraid of it. You're going to go after it and be so excited that you have, you have some skills behind you. You have confidence, you know, you have built a lot of personal development that's going to help you get this thing going. And I really did go from being, and here would be probably a big challenge in my head anyway. All the challenges are in your head, by the way. All of them. No, you're every, <laughs> every single them. one. It's all, it's all the, it's the, the six inches between your ears. That's where most people really suffer in their business. They, you know, you talk yourself out of things and, you know, you, you have that negative self-talk and your disbelief and your lack of confidence. It all stems from the thoughts that are running through your head every day. No, oh, absolutely. Um, and I can recognize them and, and, you know, you make a decision right there, either you do it or you don't. But in my, but my biggest challenge probably then was I left being a big fish in a little pond to being this tadpole in a huge ocean mm. in this, in this business. That's that. what I realized when I saw the caliber of people, um, that were in this, in this company, you wouldn't see anyone. I mean, it's just a whole new ball game. And was I going to step up to the plate and be that kind of person? Um, and even though I can handle it now, like I would think, Oh my God, to be a millionaire, I'm not sure I want to be a millionaire. And then I thought, what am I saying? And it wasn't because I didn't want to earn that income. It was because I knew the responsibility that probably came with it and the type of caliber person that can carry a team like that. Yeah. And that was overwhelming for me when I thought about it, which is stupid to think about because you're not even anywhere. You're not even there. So why are you worried about it? <laughs> but, um, but you do grow into it and you just realize I, that's what's been so cool about this is I still look at the people um, that I admire and I emulate and think, yeah, I'm going to be better today so I can grow more like they do, you know? So, um, for me, that's really the biggest challenge is taking it from, okay, I'm, I'm, I've got my name out there, like on several social media platforms to talking to people I don't even know to trying to get outside the United States. Like so those things can seem really big. Um, and, and just really for me lately, it's been, you got to step up. You need to up level, mm. you know, realizing when you're, you're not going to coast at any time. That's not really the goal. I mean, obviously I'm not working as intensely as I had to those first year or two just to get some income going. Right. But, um, just, I get, I just think that we can be really complacent and that's when you start seeing things fall apart and realizing if I'm really going to make something out of this, I have to keep stepping up my game and keep getting better and keep growing myself and finding new opportunities. And it's never this, oh, I made it to the top ah, feeling. Yeah. Um, I think, I think that, you know, it's, it's, I've had to grow more than I ever probably planned on by being in this company. And it's just made me, it's made me a better person. Um, and just more appreciative always of, of what's next, you and, know, and, yeah. and you always hear about network marketing as a, is a personal development journey with a compensation plan attached yes. to it. The, the more that you become personally developed, the more income that you can create and, and I, I think that's such a, a great thing that you just shared, showing the disparity between, you know, what life and what business was like back in 2002 before social media was so prevalent compared to 2014 when you, quote unquote, had to start over by giving up that income and and you were able to quadruple your income by going all in. And I think that's that's also part of it. People play small. You know, yes. if, you know, Les Brown talks about all the time, if you take the easy road, you're going to live a hard life. But if you take the hard road, you're going to live an easy life. And everyone deserves that. 
So, mm-hmm. so Lori, here, here's my next question. So now, you know, you're, you're doing this business and you now have people coming into the business and they want to build. What's, what's the typical onboarding process for someone to start building? Like, what are some of the recommendations? What are the, some of the things that you do team wise to get them going? Uh, and the second part of that question is, how do you keep them engaged? What do you do to reinforce the routine to keep people going so they don't let that negative self-talk get into their head and quit? <laughs> the magic question, I know. the million dollar I question. <laughs> um, I will say one of the things that I have had to learn through this growing period that I didn't mention is how to attract um, entrepreneurial type people or at least get people interested um, and I guess, cast the vision, if that's what you want to say. Casting the vision has been huge for me, mm. um, to, which I never really did much of. It was a lot different in, that, in my old company and, and realizing I'm not here to sell a product to people. I'm here to help them change their life. Yeah. You know? So um, I would say when people first come on, they have to have a social media presence, period. I, do total, I don't want them to use, do only that and not, you know, to reach out to people that they know, but I mean, they're to- taking the totally slow game. If they're going to be too, if they're too afraid to put themselves out on a social media, then they're too afraid to do the business, mm. you know, period. I always love how Emily Vavra says, if you're not speaking it, you're not believing it. So if you can't say it and you can't tell people what you're doing, you don't even believe that you can do it. And so that's huge. Have a presence on, um, social media. Um, and then yes, Facebook, I do hope that they, you know, some of them believe it or not, are not on Instagram yet. And of course, since I've been working with you for sure, we'll talk about LinkedIn and I've been, I've been on LinkedIn before, but I'm, I'm getting new to really utilizing it and making it work in the, in the right way. Um, but consistency is King. I mean, when I first started, I was, um, they asked me to speak at an ICU just because I kind of went through the ranks pretty fast at the beginning and what was my tip? And I just couldn't even pinpoint it because I felt like what I was doing was so easy. I did. I mean, I worked, but it wasn't like rocket science. I don't know anything magical about social media or anything else, but I was religiously consistent, mm. religiously I consistent. Um, I still am religiously consistent. So people are like, oh my God, I can't post every day. I'm like, this is so freaking easy. Are you kidding me? You're sitting here on your phone. And like one of my friends says, if you can poop, you can post. What do you do when you're sitting on the toilet? You know? Right. So very, you know, and I was always very, I would say, uh, so be consistent and don't lose who you are. You know, people are like, what do I post? I'm like, what are you doing? What are you doing today? How do you feel today? You know, what's going to happen? So like, what's changed in your life? Like make it so authentic. Like, you know, it is really, um, a reality show um, on some, like, especially on Facebook and people will be attracted to you when you stay true to who you are and they can follow your journey. So don't ever feel like you have to wait until you have a celebration before you put something. The struggles will attract people more um, than the ultimate I'm at the top or I lost, you know, I I reached my goal type thing. Um, So consistency and then stay plugged in. Um, I personally do team meetings every single week, which kind of ties into your second one Mm -hmm. Um, and stay plugged in. I mean, if I tell them there's a number of other things through the company that they can do, there's ongoing opportunities like that, which can be overwhelming. But I tell them, try and tell them the basic ones to stay plugged into head to an event. If they're a serious um, business builder, they have to be signed up for our next big coming up event. Um, It's just non-negotiable because that's where you see the big picture and that you're part of something so much bigger than yourself and that you have so much support and so much training and this amazing culture that is here with you. So I feel like between the support of myself and I just, all I tell them when I've had a few people that aren't that coachable, I'm like, you know what, when you ask me these questions, only thing I can teach you is what worked for me. Wow. That's all I know. Yeah. So all I, if you're wanting to do all these other things, I'm not saying they won't work, but when you're frustrated because they're not, why not try what's worked, you know, for me? And they're just, and guess where I found out? For the people that were more successful than me. Yeah. That's what I wouldn't ask them. I, that, I think that's the best tip you can ever have. Go to the people who are doing what you want to do and find out what they did. Do the same thing, you know, in your own style. So the support of your um, sponsor, 
the support of be plugged into your entire team, be plugged into your entire company. Um, and I really feel like if you are plugged into all three of those things along and they all have their own training and coaching that go along with them. Um, you, you, that is the absolute hugest things. Cause it is a lot of support that people need because there's hard times. And then when people unplug themselves, they never get out of their hole. And, um, well, what, what I love yeah. that you just said is, you know, success leads clues and, and that's the thing. And, you know, the people that ask the most questions are going to get the most answers, but yes. here's the other thing is that if what I love about you is that you're what I call a suggestive leader and, and there's not, and, and, you know, I'm meeting more and more of them. That's, that's the way that I lead. You make suggestions based off of what worked for you. You're, you're not a, a dictator in, in the aspect that, you know, what Lori says goes, you have to do this. You suggest, well, you're coming to me with a question. Here's my suggestion of what you can do. And I think suggestive leadership is one of the most powerful forms of leadership because in the end, you're not looking to run an adult daycare center. You're looking to develop more leaders. So if a suggestive leader is going to make a suggestion of someone that wants to build a certain way and that person takes the suggestion and runs with it, now you have another suggestive leader that's going to just keep on passing it down. And that's the type of organization that people want to create. You know, people don't want to be part of the dictatorship in network marketing where they feel like that person at the top is their boss. That's that's no fun. That's why people leave their corporate jobs because they're not not so much psychologically unemployable but they want to live life on their own terms in in not have to's but get to's and that's where suggestive leadership comes into play and i think you're a beautiful example of that so thank you for those shares and takeaways that's amazing yeah i would say the only other thing is not everyone has a strong sponsor leader upline so if there's people on here that don't or maybe you know they don't have the answers you're looking for I mean I've been in that situation I mean no one would expect I hope that I have every freaking answer in the world (laughs) you know that but and sometimes your leaders may not know or they're not doing something that you want to learn about I mean you guys I got here not by I asked questions, but I got here not by waiting for someone to hand me everything at all. No one handed me any. And when I started five years ago, I've created systems and training. And when I have people not utilizing it, I'm thinking I had nothing, but I went and found it. So like you have to empower yourself. You have to find it. I mean, my gosh, there's this thing called Google. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you can like search anything. Also in our company, we have amazing podcasts and resources. And so I would search under the exact thing. Like if I needed help with duplication, that's what I would search. I'm going to find all the podcasts I can find on duplication because I can enroll people, but I need to build leaders, you know? So I just can't speak enough that people throw their hands up in the air too many times. Like, well, I didn't know what to do. So, you know, I quit. Well, where the, there are the resources so are right so there much. in front of you. You just have to go yeah. find them. Yes. So that brings me to, I, I have two final questions before I let you go. So number one, what would be your number one tip to share with someone that, like you said, they may not have a great sponsor or upline or team. What would be the number one tip you would offer to someone if they are wanting to start building their business right now? Um, I would definitely honestly search for the best network marketing books, podcasts, things like that. I mean, we would probably suggest, I'll just throw it out there. I mean, Eric Worre would be one of my number one as far as a total network marketing guru. Um, your podcast has been super helpful for Thank my team. Thank you. Um, they have, I think what's um, with the exception of this podcast, they're <laughs> usually pretty short um, and straight to the point. And I think people absolutely love that um, so that they can get a little bit of nugget and they're very useful, like go do this now type thing. Yeah. Um, Thank you. So definitely find, you know, and and when you find one resource, you will find another. Um, And then always reach up. I think people don't realize that let's just say your sponsor is not, your enrolling sponsor is not engaged at all. Um, You can call your company and ask who is my strongest building leader that's you know that I that I could reach out to and they will be in most cases I would think if not all so thrilled to hear from you you know that they can help you so um, I really do diligence in having 
you know, I can't find all of my team members ever, but I try and have them all added to my team page so they know I'm there to support them. So there usually, in most cases, always is someone there to help you if you're willing to, you know, try and find them. Otherwise, do you have other friends that are in the industry or people you know or look for people in the industry and network together and learn from each other that way? I know that a lot of people have done it that way as well. Um, but the resources are out there. They're just absolutely amazing. If you even just search network marketing training or anything like that. Love that. And my final question, in what you have found, obviously this, this answer has probably changed over the years, but what has been the best way for you to find new business prospect and builders? Social media, usually. Um, not to... Um, to belittle any personal interactions that you have with people. Um, but it's hard for them to see exactly what you can provide and what you do just by looking at you face to face in the gym or wherever you are. Um, so I think those personal connections get connected. I try and connect with everyone that I know face to face on a social media platform that they're on, you know, if not all of them. So number one, don't talk about your products continuously all the time. Um, I was, I did not know this. I did, the, I did it totally that way at the beginning. Right. So I, that's what I was taught. That's what everyone did. Just talked about, about the products all the time, or not just the products, but the benefits of the products, you know, which is the best way. I always say that instead of talking about your products, you want to talk about the benefits that your products actually bring because that's what people care about, not what the product is. Um, but mostly you have to talk about the, you know, if you're in it for the opportunity in the business, then you have to find a way to cast that vision every step of the way. And you don't have to wait until I think people, oh, people struggle so much to share um, anything about the opportunity because they haven't quote made it, yet, you know, or they haven't made any money yet. And, you know, I just, I have good friends um, that I've learned from. And I think one of the best things you can do is have a conviction statement so that when you're, whether you're at an event or anywhere else, oh, that's the other thing. They should have their own events to kind of you know, let people know what they're doing. Um, but you should have a conviction statement like this opportunity is going to um, pay off our debt. I will be debt free because of this opportunity, even if it's day one, um, or I am going to be able to take my kids on the dream vacations they want because of this, or I will like have that statement and say it with so much conviction and belief so that people know where you're going because people want to lock arms with people who know where they're going, period. They want to have a strong leader. So vision casting, um, whether you're talking to people at an event or on social media in, in lots of different ways, you can also share what it has done for you already. Like if you want to be home with your kids, but you haven't made enough money for that or replace your other job, then, oh my gosh, if you made a hundred bucks and you're able to take you and your husband out to dinner, talk about that. That's like a free dinner. Like that would make a big difference for a lot of families. Absolutely. No, that's... So, yeah, that. And then, of course, yeah, be on. And I will say again, LinkedIn has a lot of people that are probably looking for an opportunity um, more than just the benefits of the product. So casting the vision there is kind of. If you feel uncomfortable about it, you would feel very comfortable about it there, you know. Yeah. Um, but I would be definitely be doing it other places, too, on Facebook and and anything. And the, I would say the other thing is that you absolutely have to get out of your comfort zone because the people, if you're trying to look like everyone else, you're not going to stand out ever. Do the things that no one else will do. The videos, no one wants to get undo a video, a let Facebook live video, but they do it anyway. If they, if they really want to reach people, um, super authentic stuff. I know one, one that I'll never forget is one of our team members that you know, after she, we do health and wellness. So being fit is attractive, but you know what? So is the struggles that you go through. And after you just had your third baby and the way that your stomach looks, if you're going to show that to people, that's vulnerable, Yeah. you know, and you don't see everyone doing that. And she got so much traction on that because she was saying, well, this isn't where I want to be, but this is my body and I love my body and I'm going to nourish it. And I mean, it was just an absolutely amazing post that, um, you know, it's things like that. Like, do you want to blend in with the crowd or do you want to stand out that people see you as brave and bold and you know what you're going, where you're going and that you're going to help people. So 
that would be my biggest thing. People just got to put their big pants on. <laughs> no, I mean, vulnerability is one of the greatest mm-hmm. strengths that any one person can possess. And I think there are so many nuggets in this episode. People definitely have to go back and re-listen to this over and over again. So before we sign off, where can people contact you and how can they find Lori Olson on social media? On Facebook, it's just Lori, Lori Olson. Um, and on Instagram, it's Lori B. Olson. <laughs> they wouldn't let me be Lori Olson. <laughs> um, and on LinkedIn, it's just Lori Olson. I also have a website. It's LoriOlson.net. So I will put these links in the show notes for all the listeners. So you guys can go connect with Lori and let her know your feedback and reach out to her. And Lori, I just wanted to say thank you so, so much for being here today. I am, I am truly so grateful for you and your connection and your friendship and everything that I'm learning from you by working together. And I am just super excited to see where you and your business is going to continue to go. And thank you so much for being here today. Absolutely. Thank you, Scott. So everyone, please check this out. And again, like, subscribe, leave a five-star rating, leave your comments below, you know, reach out to Lori on social media, as I said, with those show notes. So everyone, please enjoy the rest of your day and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye everybody. So again, thank you so much for checking out today's episode. And if you can go over to Apple Podcasts or iTunes and leave me a five-star rating, write a review, and share this with anyone that you feel could benefit from this, I would be so, so grateful. And again, if you would like to learn more about LinkedIn and how I can personally assist you in growing your network marketing business, head over to www.scotterron.net and schedule a free 15-minute coaching session with me today. Have a great day, and I'll see you guys next time. The podcast you just heard was made using Anchor. Ever thought about making your own podcast? Anchor makes it really easy for anyone to get started. It's a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing podcasts. Best of all, it's 100% free. Sign up now at anchor.fm slash new. That's anchor.fm slash new to get started.